Hey now, it's your girl Shanita Nicole and welcome to Do Dream One if you're new and if you're already a dreamer, welcome, welcome back y'all, welcome back, welcome, welcome back y'all, welcome back. I am going to be talking about designing DTF transfers inside of Canva and I'm going to show you the full process of how I design a simple yet beautiful design inside of Canva so that it can go on to a DTF transfer. DTF printing is a little bit newer to the craft world specifically and I'm going to show you how I designed inside of Canva using my Prestige R2 printer and I'm just going to give you a little bit of tips and tricks of if you're designing for specifically DTF inside of Canva. I love me some Canva and I just want to give you guys some tips so you can have the perfect DTF prints. So let's just jump right into the video. Let go. Hey guys, we are inside of Canva software and I do have the pro edition, but we're going to go ahead and customize the size. Now, when you are designing specifically for printing and DTF printing, you want to have 3000 by 3000 pixels the starting point. So we're going to go to custom size and the width and height, we're going to put 3000 by 3000 pixels and we're going to create new design. Okay. So this is going to be our design in canvas and we want a large design in canvas, especially when you're printing. When you want to print out DTFs, you want it to be 300 DPI. So I'm going to show you a little hack of how you can get 300 DPI inside of Canva. Okay. So I'm going to delete this one and we're going to go inside of the design. I am going to recreate in my soft girl era design with two of my clip arts okay these are both my clip arts they're absolutely beautiful and we're just going to start from scratch with this design now with designing for dtf there are a few things that i do want to let you know of so let's go inside of our uploads this is one of my clip arts and one of the things you want to know about clip arts is you want it to be a good quality clip art okay so dpi stands for dots per inch and just as a printing standard 300 dpi is the best resolution for printing so it could be crisp and clear i'm not sure if you've ever downloaded to something and then we went to print it out it's blurry it's pixelated it doesn't look well that's because they didn't have enough dots per inches okay so we want to make sure that our images are crisp and clear and I'm not sure but if you zoom in you can see this looks absolutely amazing okay so with this image there are a couple things that you want to be aware of when printing DTF for instance her earrings are though they're really really cute they have intricate pieces so just so that we don't have any problems i create a barrier around certain images now i do not do this all the time but for the best quality what you can do is you can go to edit photo and then you can go down to shadows and under outline you can select outline now this is a thicker outline i honestly would not typically do this this thick but for purposes of showing you guys i will keep it at this thick the size is 25 okay you can make it a little bit thinner realistically i probably would have kept it around four but just because i'm going to show you how smooth it looks the thicker the outline is okay I'm going to say this again, just so that you're clear. You do not have to do the outline. I am only doing the outline to show you the difference. I have printed out intricate pieces in DTF and it wasn't an issue. And then I have, and it was, so you do not have to do this, but just best practice. If you want less errors, then you can. I will show you later things that will not work out, but this is just an option and a different way to do things. I want you to know that you can play around with it and figure out what, what, what works best for you. This is not a limitation to the printing. It's just a precaution when designing. I hope that makes sense. 
So we're going to keep it at 25 for demonstration purposes. And then that's going to be the image. Now, a lot of people love different types of gradients. Gradients are not really good for DTF. Gradients are good for sublimation and DTG, which is direct to garment. But for DTF, a lot of people like to use gradients and I'm gonna show you what I mean. A lot of people love designing with blurs, which are similar to gradients, right? This is a blur. So this blur right here, you can change the color. So a lot of images like memorial images and pretty flowers and different things like that, people love these blurs, but these blurs are not good for DTF printing. You see that? And I'm going to show you the reason why. So the edges here, where it's like the gradient and the blur. Oh, with DTF printing, there's a film. The printer prints out color ink and then on top of the color ink it prints out white ink so it's a layer of the film the color ink and then the white ink and with that layer this gets lost in translation this blur with these blurs they don't know how to capture the small intricate pieces of the gradients of that shade so a lot of people would have thought Add in a blur and then the words and add in multiple blurs, which look good specifically for digital products. But when you're actually trying to print this out, this would not look good. Okay. So for DTF, you want crisp, clean lines, very clear, very crisp. Okay. And then for text, you want thick fonts. Like I said, there's always multiple ways to do something, right? So you do not have to have thick font, but in my experience, the thicker the font, the easier it is because when you're printing on the film, the ink is just better thicker, okay? Like now this is just the extreme of the extremes, guys. I'm gonna use the graduate font and I'm going to type in my, and I think it's all caps, right? In my all right nice thick chunky fonts like i said you do not always have to do it but just to get the best prints it typically works well and you can play around with it yourself and try different fonts and different things and see how it works well for you for this particular design i am going to go to effects and i just want a little bit of a curve okay i'm gonna do a little bit of a curve around her head i'm going to duplicate and then i'm going to take the curve to zero you can type it in or you can slide it it's up to you and i'm going to type in all caps soft girl error okay now here's the thing with words depending on how wide you want your image you may want to position your words differently, okay? So I want it to look like this, almost like a triangle, small at the top, and then it comes out at the bottom. If you want it to be more boxy, you can put, you can change where the font goes. You can set your words up differently if you want it to be more proportioned. I specifically wanted it to look like this and that's the cool thing in regards to designing okay so this is my image now how do we download this inside of Canva to make sure that it prints out correctly we can select all we can group this if we want and then we can make it larger okay now remember we're on 3000 by 3000 pixels that's where we are so when we're downloading this image to get the best quality image we are going to go to download right here shows the 3000 by 3000 pixels we're going to select transparent background because we want it to be transparent and we're going to take this slider here and slide it all the way up to where it says 9000 375 by 9,375 pixels. Yes, this is a large image. 
but this is what we want because we need all of the space to print it correctly. We're going to just select download and then our image is going to download. And once we get it inside of what's called DigiRip, which is our software specifically for my DTF printer, we can resize it to 12 by 12. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. So. I hope you learned some things in regards to designing, specifically in regards to the edges, the sizes of the fonts, the pixels of your image. And I hope you guys learned something. So the good thing about DTF is that you can print white ink, so it can go on dark color shirts. So that's something that's amazing. However, we want to stay away from gradients and different things like that. I'm going to show you some more things that you may want to stay away from. Just so you can understand a little bit more of what I mean by like the gradients, the splashes, the watercolors, this is what I mean. You see how these edges here are darker, but then they fade away at the ends. Now, realistically, this image would have looked beautiful behind this, right? That would have looked absolutely wonderful. However, this would not print that well with DTF because of the edges, okay? So we love these types of images and craft in the crafting world. Also this, this would not have looked well. You see how there are so many little intricate separate pieces where the printer will have to print the blue and then it will have to print the lighter whites. It just will not transfer beautiful on a DTF print sublimation it will look well but not dtf this as well you see all those little intricate pieces now i'm not saying it's not possible however it leaves room to possibly not adhere correctly to not um to come off faster to not look well like i said there's always exceptions to rules but just on the safe side this is something you should just play around with just so you know again these are just more examples and I just searched splashed watercolors. These right here, people love this. Let me show you how adorable that image would have looked on here. Look at that. That looks popping, okay? It looks absolutely gorgeous. So for a digital item, that would look amazing. For even a sublimation item. I mean, that is so cute. The colors match and match her earrings. It looks absolutely amazing. However, just for DTF, it may not look that well. And these are these circles may I know for a fact the circles would look better than the gradients. So the circles you actually may be able to get away with this one. You may be able to get away with this one the more I look at it versus the gradients. So that's something I may have to test that out at a later date. But this right here was like the watercolors and it's darker, deeper. Like I said, you could do it, but you just want to be careful with it, okay? So I'll just give you more and more examples so you can see what I meant, all right? So just keep that in mind when you're designing. And like I said, try it out, play around with it, but don't always get your hopes up. Just be aware that it could possibly not turn out as great as how you would imagine, okay? So now let's get back to designing. So I downloaded my image and inside of the Mac, because I'm using a MacBook, if you see right there, it says resolution 300 by 300. That's the DPI that I'm talking about. So it lets you know inside of a Mac what your image resolution is, as well as under tools, adjust size, it shows the image dimensions. So anytime, if you're using a Mac, I apologize, I don't know how you will find it on a Windows computer. And for the printing of my transfers, I have to use a Windows, but I'm not familiar with finding the DPI on a Windows computer, so I apologize. But if you're using a Mac, you can actually look and see what your resolution is. And you want to stay with that 300 um DPI for that resolution okay that's how you'll get the best quality print photo for you so now that we have this we are going to go and upload this inside of the software called digirip where I can print out 
the image from my Prestige R2, okay? So if anyone is interested inside of DigiRip, how I set it up, I am inside and my image is loading. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my image. I'm going to change the size. And then we're actually, it's pending. I am going to, everything is all set up. You see, that's the image. The image is mirrored. We're going to go ahead and press or select print. Okay. So now it's going to send to my printer. Now it's actively printing. And as you see, you can see the progress bar printing everything out. And it's beautiful. There is the film. There's the ink. There's the white backing. So now that it's all printed out, this part right here is warm. There is a heater for that part right there. Okay. And then this will warm it up so that the ink can dry some. And then we can powder it. Okay, so after I printed out, I always inspect it to make sure that everything came out great before I powder it because I do not want to add the powder adhesive and then there's errors or issues with it, okay? So what you do is you go ahead and you powder all of the ink. You put powder on there and you rub it back and forth and then it's going to go into the Phoenix Air. This is a cure oven, okay? So I place that with the ink facing upward so that it can cure and i place it at 279 for 135 seconds okay so i go ahead press the button so that it can cure i have an air purifier i want to have a well ventilated area and then you know it cured correctly when it looks like an orange peel you see how that looks like an orange peel so that's how you know it cured correctly look how beautiful those colors are they are popping tin i am so happy with it now we're going to go ahead and press this on to a shirt today we'll be using a bella canvas 100 percent cotton shirt in a size large you can grab your bella canvas tee in the link down below this is style 3001 it's a unisex jersey short sleeve tee this color dust is super cute really nice for the fall really nice and natural and neutral color i absolutely love it you can pause it and read all the product details it is a hundred percent heirloom combed and ring spun cotton you could also check out the sizing chart i personally have a large right now but you can pause and take a look at this as well as check out a lot of the other beautiful nice fall type colors i'm going to be clicking over them and you can pause if you want to get the same type of color but these are tons of colors. They come in a lot of different wonderful colors that you can check out in your leisure. You can also create an account. And if you have any specific questions or you want me to go over anything, please email me at dodreamon3 at gmail.com. I'd be more than happy to answer any and all of your questions, okay? Once again, the Bella Canvas link is down in the description below okay so now we are at our heat press and our heat press is set for 315 degrees fahrenheit for 15 seconds okay i will be using a bella canvas 100 percent cotton t-shirt and we are going to pre-press the shirt so let's fold the shirt so we could get the middle of the shirt we're going to fold the shirt so that we can get a crease line in the middle of the shirt and that can indicate that that's the middle of our shirt and makes it a lot easier okay we make sure that we lint roll the shirt on both sides and then once we have the exact middle of the shirt we will go ahead and pre-press the shirt to get all the moisture out now 
you wanna make sure that you're pre-pressing shirts to get the moisture out of the shirt so that the shirts can adhere better. So that's the purpose of pre-pressing, okay? So we're gonna pre-press, okay? And then now not only did it pre-press, there's a line down the middle of the shirt. So we know that's the center of the shirt. So we're doing two things at once. Okay, so now we have our DTF transfer that we created inside of Canva. And you know it's a great DTF curing. When the white ink looks like an orange peel, you know that that is a great cure. Okay, so this is gonna adhere wonderfully. So what we did was I did cut the edges so that I can fold the image and put a crease at the top. This crease is going to, do not put it on the actual image, it's on the film. This crease is going to align with the crease that's in the shirt so that it all can be in the middle. I'm personally gonna just go down about three fingers in inches. I also have t-shirt rulers, etc. but the three finger rule typically works for me where I want the placement for this specific image, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and slide the image in. Now you could do it two ways. You can do it with the, you can press it with the Teflon sheet if you like, or you can just press it regularly. I'm gonna do it without a Teflon sheet this time. I'm gonna go ahead and press the shirt at 315 for 15 seconds. Okay, so that was 15 seconds. I am going to let it cool. Now I have something called a cooling block that you can place. Now, one thing that is good when you're trying to cool it is to actually take it off of your heat press because the heat press holds heat, okay? So you can remove it, you can lift it up, you can get the air under it, you can put it on your table, etc. because this is a warm or cool peel. I prefer cool peels, okay? Okay, now here is the test. It's cool. And now it's time for the big reveal. Yay! Now that is a beautiful peel. There's nothing on the film. That indicates that everything turned out how it's supposed to be. It looks absolutely amazing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a second press just to adhere it even more into the shirt, okay? So we're going to take a piece of parchment paper. You can use a Teflon sheet, but we're gonna use parchment paper. We're going to cover the image in full. And then we are going to press it again. So we're gonna cover it completely. And then we're going to press this again for 15 seconds. Now, this is the final seal of the DTF transfer into the shirt. And it literally feels like it's inside of the fabric. This looks and feels absolutely amazing. It looks wonderful. It turned out great. And I'm absolutely in love with it. This was a great DTF image product. Look how black the black is, how brown the brown is. The colors look amazing. The outlines are great. Everything turned out just like how I expected it. And I am completely in love with this image. You guys, look how amazing this turned out. Now, there are a few things that I want to go over that we specifically talked about. Okay, for instance, 
the thick letters. Look how amazing the thick letters look, okay? Then we have the outline protecting the girl from the little images of her earrings, etc. This just looks really good, really vibrant, bold, and it looks professional. So I'm just showing you all the tips that we discussed inside of designing how it actually came out. This came out better than I even expected. I hope you guys learn some things in regards to designing inside of Canva for DTF transfers, DTF prints. When you're going to send this to someone, if you do not have a DTF printer, hopefully this will help you so you can get the best results in your transfers. If you have a DTF printer, hopefully you can create better designs and items for you to sell as well as use for your personal use. So I hope you guys learned something today. If you have any questions, comment or concerns, please reach out to me. And that's the video. Look how amazing it turned out. I'm so happy with our project, guys. We did it. Please make sure you follow me on all of my social media platforms under the name Do Dream On.